When you say that there's no external factors that are in control of manifesting, I just, I'm curious, how does that square with the concept of God? And you also mentioned free will in your book as well. So can you just talk a little bit about that prayer, God, free will, or, and, and how all that kind of relates to this concept of manifesting? Sure. Let me go backwards a little bit. If you look at the evolution of our species, we used to live in tribes. And typically these tribes were up to about 150. Because after that, it's very hard to keep track of an individual. In the tribal setting, though, the tribe itself would put constraints on your behavior because this is, they were all around you. They were judging you. And accordingly, you would act appropriate to the benefit of the society. Once you got over that number, and that number, I think it's called Dumbarton's number. I could be wrong, or Dunbar's number. Could it keep track of people? And so some people would argue that there was another contributing factor to the following. We're the only species that has a finite understand or an understanding of our finite existence, meaning that we know we're going to die. This creates for many people an existential crisis because they're always concerned about dying. Two, once you get over that 150 number, you can't keep track of people. So what would be better than to create a narrative of an omniscient being who sees every action you do and judges that action? So many people would argue that the source of religion actually is to help society function better by creating a moral ethical framework. And if you don't fall within that, then you are punished by this omniscient being that sees everything you do. And it's interesting, if you look at every society, there's a woman who won the TED Prize, and she looked at the basis of every religious practice. And she got together with nine priests, gurus, whatever you want to call them. And the fundamental agreement was, and I think science backs this, is that compassion is the fundamental basis of every religion, because that's what's allowed us to survive as a species, as well as the golden rule. If you look at essentially every culture, there is some definition of an omniscient being, and that if you practice X, Y, or Z, or you're a good person, you're going to be rewarded by everlasting life. And uh, you can even pull it into the Buddhist narrative or the Hindu narrative, and it's associated with quote unquote karma. You're being punished or rewarded based on your past lives. So these types of narratives were a mechanism to control people's behavior, as well as to benefit overlords or priest class. Because once society evolved, you also got the creation of these individuals because it went from an agrarian society or small groups of people to much larger groups of people. And this is where the greed of man has ever evolved. So if you look at God or religion, how do you pick? And even among, as an example, Christians, you have 35,000 sects of Christianity, at least. So I would suggest that if you look at all the various religions, you have well over a million different narratives about who's right. If you have a million definitions about who's right, that means no one's right. And so in terms of any type of organized religion or belief that there is somehow somebody magical out there who cares about me, at least in my examination of the information I have, I don't believe it whatsoever. But what I do know and is that I'm a human being, I have a mind, and there are certain techniques that I can use that not only benefit me, but by very the nature of walking that walk, benefit other people, which actually hopefully improves our society and makes the world a better place. Now, if you want to call God a sense or a purpose of goodness, I can certainly agree with that. Do I have any evidence of that? Absolutely zero. But it doesn't matter. I don't need any evidence of a God. I don't need any evidence of an omniscient being. All I need to know is that when I care for other people, when I connect for, uh, with other people, I feel good about myself, period. And the reality is when I feel that, 
it's also true. Uh, my reward and pleasure centers are being stimulated. My physiology is working at its best. All my cognitive brain networks are functioning at their best. And that's what really all I need to know. And that's fact-based. It's not magical thinking. If you like that video, you're going to love the next one. Click this thumbnail right here and I'll see you over there.